Hey everyone, I've seen throughout the success community people wondering if it's possible to automatically activate uh, a user in Salesforce through automation, you know, process builder. I recently came across this requirement with one of my clients and it is possible. It doesn't take that much knowledge. Uh, it's possible through process builder and flows. And so hopefully people will find this useful. I'll show how to activate, in this case, a community user for a customer portal. And, and basically we'll have the trigger criteria being setting a pick list value to a certain status and then having process builder take it from there. So to get us started, I'm just gonna make a contact record right now Call them test user and another important field to fill out is the email address this is using nonprofit success pack so uh, you don't see the standard email field personal email um, you know takes precedent of that and in the background it updates email so so let me just throw in an email in here I'm not going to show my email address I'm gonna keep it pretty bare bones. Save that record. And ultimately the pick list that we're going to base it off of, we have a dependent pick list. So it's going to be when the first one is set to attended and its dependent pick list is set to approved, which basically means active portal access. It's very clear that that's the requirement the client wants. That's what they want to be the triggering criteria. <clears throat> so now our next step is to create a flow. I'm going to go into setup flows and let me make a new one. Of course, let me enable flash and Chrome. And for those of you who've, you know, taken a peek at the API documentation and tried to figure this out, it's not, you know, the most straightforward. Sometimes you're not sure what's read only, what's not, what's required, you know, uh, when going about it from a programmatic way to, to activate a user. So what I'll show you is a, a pretty bare bones way to activate them. And I think that most people will be able to get the, the hang from there on if they wanted to add additional information. I'm going to drag out a record create element. Also, for those of you who don't know, in a couple of weeks, the flow designer is getting overhauled. In one of my early access dev orgs, I already have access to it, and it's honestly a complete overhaul. It's taking me a decent amount of time to learn, so this is going to look different very soon. Uh, I'm going to name this create user, and let's choose the user object. Another thing I'm, I want to point out is that I'm not bulkifying this. I'm not making it, you know, able to handle a large set of records. This is with the intent of if, you know, on a record by record basis, or if you're using a data loader and have your batch size set to one, changing a status and you want it to create a user. If you, if you seek to have this handle doing it in bulk, I'm not going to handle that in this video. I haven't yet tested it to see if it's possible. So for now, this is uh, what I'm starting with. And let's start with basically all of the required fields. Alias is one. And actually, your best bet is to create a formula for that. Because, um, you know, when you create a user manually from the, from the user page layout, alias is one of those fields that it automatically does for you. So I can show you a quick formula to, to get you started with that. Let's do alias. Actually, there's two variables we have to create first. So before we populate alias, let's choose first name, last name. Create two new variables for each. Always make sure they're set to input, output. 
don't worry about the default and have the data type be text. And now let's create our formula. And what we're going to do is trim left put your merge tag for first name the variable we just made comma three and then trim right I think my syntax is right all right looks good so basically it just takes the first three letters of their first and last name, concatenates them. Um, you know, alias isn't the most important thing, but it is required. Another required field for community users is <clears throat> community nickname. And in this case, I'm just going to pick first name. If you wanted to create another formula and have it be something fancier, you can go right ahead. Let's see. Contact ID, of course. That is very important for creating for creating community users because the user record is always associated with the contact. And I'm gonna make a new variable for that. Call it contact ID, text type. <clears throat> Let's pick email now. We're just going to have that be simply put their email address. Um, let me make a new. In this case, I'm going to have email and username be the same thing. So I'm just going to create a new variable called username and have that be the same for the email field. There's also email and coding key. This is required. If you're not sure, you could read their documentation on it, but I know that for default in every org that I've worked in, it's this ISO 88591. And also the language locale key. Once again, you could just pick from the pick list. It makes it pretty easy for you. I'm going to pick English United States. It's also locale SID key. And once again, the pick list, it's like the same selection for the most part as the language locale key. So let me. English US <laughs> profile ID is important so through reading through you know Salesforce's API docs I couldn't quite figure out if I had to provide you know the license type for instance let me open up the user creation <clears throat> so I couldn't just determine if this user license field was something that was necessary to populate in this and it seems like it's not if um, you're concerned about that it, it's just handled by selecting the profile so what you need to do in the flow is provide the profile ID and you know that's pretty straightforward for for a savvy admin so I'm going to populate that, and there's only like a couple more fields. There's the time zone SID key. And I'm going to pick America, New York. That's the time zone this client is based out of. And username is last. Once again, 
using that variable twice for email and username. So this this is really all you need to to create a user, a community user, um, you know, programmatically. I'm going to give this an OK in the top right corner of the element, set it as the start element. And let me save this flow. I'm going to call it create user flow, leave it as auto launched. And it doesn't matter that it's not connected to anything. It's not you know, doing anything else. And like I said, this isn't bulkified. This is really only intended if your batch size is set to one using the data loader or you're just doing this on a record by record basis in um, on a contact record. Make sure to activate it so you could point to it in Process Builder. And now let's pop up into the Process Builder and create one. Let's just call this Activate contacts in portal. It's going to start when our record is changed and our starting object is contact when it's created or edited. And I'll call this criteria approved. So once again, there's that, this is two dependent pick lists, but really we only have to worry about the second one, what's the name of it? It's called attended. Attended equals approved portal access. Always make sure that you have this execute to subsequently meet criteria. And let's launch the flow. Now we're going to pass a couple variables. Contact ID, let's reference. Let's see, where are you? Contact ID, first name. The last name. And the username. And pick the email field. And those are the only four um, variables we have to pass. Let's give this an activation and see if it works. I'm going to set this to attended and send attended to portal access. And actually just to show, uh, as you can see here, this user is not currently enabled in the portal. And we hit no errors. I hit the drop down, and as you could see, they were just activated as a community user automatically and if I go to that users list here you could see user test down here um, yeah simple as that another thing I want to point out is that you know if you happen to have another contact or a user for that matter with with the same email you're just gonna get thrown a generic a generic error I didn't you know have any sort of duplicate handler within this and the effort for that's not that difficult I mean the way I would probably go about it is set up another flow that is checking how many other contacts share this email and then a validation rule if that's if that's greater than one you know to prevent them from being able to select that attended uh, portal access status so there's a couple things to consider with this. It's not foolproof, um, but in the perfect org, um, it, it definitely is possible. Yeah, that's about it. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.